What's up, this is Simon back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to optimize your YouTube videos so that you'll be able to rank on the first page for certain keywords, even if you have zero subscribers. And I'm not just gonna give you some random tips. What I'll do is I'll take you live through every single step from keyword research to actually uploading and optimizing your video for the YouTube algorithm. I have used this exact method to rank for some very high competitive keywords, like for example, this video that's ranking now number one for the keyword, how to make money on Instagram. And I have uploaded this video when I had just over 2000 subscribers. Also to make it very easy for you to actually implement everything that I'm showing you in this video, I've created a YouTube optimization checklist that you can use every time you create a new video so you don't miss any steps when it comes to optimizing your video for the YouTube algorithm. So you can download this checklist for free. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description of this video. And as this will be a bit of a longer video, I'll leave timestamps of all the steps down below in the description. So in the future, you can just come back to this video and rewatch certain parts. All right, so let's hop onto my computer and get started. All right, so the first thing that you always have to do before you even decide on your video topic is keyword research. That basically means we try to find certain keywords, so phrases that people type into the YouTube search bar that we can rank for. So when somebody types in, for example, how to get views on YouTube, you want your video to come up on the first page so people can actually find your video and you get views. And I wanna um, give you an example of what happens if you do this step correctly and what happens if you skip this step or if you don't do this step at all. So on the top here, you see one of my videos that I've done um, almost a year ago. And uh, on this axis, you see the number of days it has been online and on this axis, the number of views. And in the beginning, you see, I did get some views from my subscribers, but then it dropped off very quickly and I didn't get any more views. And the reason is because I targeted far too competitive keywords for my size of channel. And that's why even um, almost after a year, I don't even have a thousand views. Now, this example on the bottom here, I actually did my keyword research correctly and I targeted lower competition keywords that I'm actually able to rank for. And the way it looks is that in the beginning, you might not get a massive views also, but as time goes on and your video gets ranked for those keywords, the views keep growing. So after a little bit over a year, I almost have 20,000 views for this specific video. And you probably think that, okay, that's not a lot. I wanna grow quicker. But the thing is, you basically uh, have to be realistic with your channel. You're not going to be able to rank for high competition keywords when you just start out on YouTube. So you wanna build up your channel with long tail keywords, with low competition keywords, and then keep, um, targeting more competitive keywords as your channel grows. So the way people do this, or the way I do it, is by finding one primary keyword, that's the keyword you wanna optimally rank number one for, and then three secondary keywords that you also wanna get some traffic from. And the easiest way to do this is by using easy to use tools. So TubeBuddy and VidIQ is basically what most YouTubers use to do their keyword research and to do a lot of other stuff that makes your YouTuber career easier. I'll leave link to, links to both of these tools down below in the description. These are basically um, extensions for your browser that will give you a lot more information about keywords and how to optimize your videos. You can decide either if to use TubeBuddy or VidIQ. I personally use both of them. They both have free plans, so you can do a ton of stuff with using them with the free plan. I have the paid plan for TubeBuddy because I use some paid tools for the, from them and I have the free plan from VidIQ and I basically use the best of both tools. So you kind of have to find out what works best for you. It's, it's kind of preference. So the way it looks when you have installed those is you have your, like I'm using Google Chrome. So this is what it looks like for me. Um, this is from VidIQ, so you see the performance of your channel in the last couple of hours and days. And here's um, the thing that you have for TubeBuddy. And the first thing that I do when I try to find new video ideas is I go to this icon here, which opens up my TubeBuddy uh, dashboard here. And then I can click on Launch Keyword Explorer now and that will launch my Keyword Explorer. And that's when I type in the topics that I wanna do videos about. So let's say for example, I wanna 
um, do a similar video than this one, I want to make a video about how to get views on YouTube. So let's type in how to get views on YouTube. And you always already get some suggestions here uh, on the bottom. And let's just click on this and explore this keyword. So what, what TubeBuddy does is it kind of finds out how likely I am, my channel is, to be able to rank for this specific keyword. And you see the overall score now is poor, six out of 100 is not very good. And um, that's actually already customized to my channel. You can go to unweighted here and you see that for most channels it's actually not good to target. Um, but you want to actually use this one so you have it customized to your channel. And they always analyze search volume, so the volume is actually pretty good, a lot of people type in this keyword, but the competition is very high and the optimization strength is pretty good. Optimization strength basically means that um, the videos that are already ranking, they can be optimized a lot more, which gives you opportunity to optimize your video better and rank and outrank those videos basically. So it wouldn't be very clever to just go for this keyword. So what we can do is we can check out what TubeBuddy gives us as alternatives to find a keyword that we can actually rank for. So you can go to related on the right side here and click on how to get views on YouTube fast. Maybe this keyword we can rank easier for. So let's analyze it again and that as well is not a very good keyword to target. You see that we have a score 3 out of 100. So let's check another one. How to get views on YouTube fast 2020. Let's click on this one. Let's and you see we get an excellent score, so 82 out of 100. What you realize is that the search volume has gone down a bit, so not as many people type in how to get YouTube fast 2020 compared to how to get views on YouTube, um, but still a good amount of people are looking for the keyword. And then the competition is pretty low, which is perfect if you are a small channel. And then the optimization strength is good as well, so you can outrank other videos just by optimizing your video better with keywords, with your description, with your tags, and all that kind of stuff. So this would actually be a good keyword to target. And what's also cool is that once, your key, once you are ranked for how to get views on YouTube fast 2020, if YouTube actually sees that you have a very high quality video, people are watching your video all the way through, then you will be able to rank for how to get views on YouTube fast and how to get views on YouTube because that keyword, which is a higher competition keyword, is part of your lower competition keyword. The longer tail keyword will basically guarantee that you will get some views so that YouTube gets the chance to analyze your video and see that uh, it's actually a good one and it's able to get that video into uh, in front of the right people. So the next thing that I do um, is I actually go to vidIQ, which is the second plugin that I, um, I've i showed you. And they also have a keyword research tool um, which works a little bit differently. So I take the keyword that I have found here, copy this one and paste it in this one here. And this is basically how I find my secondary keyword. So I type search and what vidIQ will give you is the actual search volume um, of those specific keywords. So this is my main keyword that I want to target for the video and I want to find three secondary ones. So what I could use is um, how to uh, how to get more views on YouTube fast. It's already part of my keyword, but how to get more subscribers, how to get YouTube views, how to grow on YouTube. They all have a quite decent search volume, so this is also worth targeting. You also get an overall score, which tells you if it's worth targeting, but that's basically how I get my secondary keywords. So cool. We have now our primary keyword and our three secondary keywords. Um, the next thing we can do is, or we should do, is content research. Um, that's basically, the goal here is to find the things that people actually want to know when they type in that keyword. So you want to find out what your video should be about that will keep people watching. And here again, an example of a video that I've done this well with and an, ex an example of how where I didn't do this well. So here you see this is a 14 minute video and 40.4% of people actually watch the video all the way through. This is called audience retention. You get this information inside of your YouTube studio. And that's actually pretty good. So people click on the video and then it's 
pretty normal that some people will click away after a couple of seconds. You can't really avoid that. But um, you see a lot of people actually watch the video all the way through compared to um, this one where the majority of people, 75%, clicked away after a couple of seconds of the video. So they obviously didn't get what they were looking for. That's why you have to do content research. And I'm gonna show you a couple of ways you can do that. So the first thing you can do is just go to Google and just type in how to get views on YouTube and see what already works inside of a search engine. So Google, just like YouTube is a search engine and they try to find the best content for people typing in this keyword. So just go through some posts there and check out the posts that actually work. And that's the content you, all, so you also wanna to provide to your audience because that's what works and that's what people are actually looking for. You also get some YouTube suggestions here. So you can also type in how to get views on YouTube into the YouTube search bar and then you will find some video ideas here. Here all, you can also get some ideas um, about titles you could use, about thumbnail ideas. Don't copy it, but get some inspiration. Another thing you can do is go to Quora or Answer the Public, which are question and answer websites where people just type in random questions about specific topics. So um, if, you, if you type in YouTube views into Quora, um, YouTube views, then you see people asking questions, how can I get more views on YouTube? Uh, is it safe to buy YouTube views? So you could include in your video uh, about the topic of buying YouTube views and all that kind of stuff. And then another site I wanna show you is Answer the Public. This is a very cool site as well. So let's t uh, type in YouTube views here. By the way, I will leave all the websites I'm talking about down below in the description so you can check them out for yourself. And then Answer the public will give me a lot of questions that I can answer for people interested. Oh, I, I typed in views, views. Sorry, I wanted, I wanted to type in YouTube views. YouTube views. Okay, so this website will give you a lot of questions that people are interested in that are interested in YouTube views. So this is what it looks like. You get questions with why, when, where, will. So basically all kinds of questions. So let's check out some of them. Um, why YouTube views not updating, why YouTube views get stuck, why YouTube views are different, or how, how YouTube views work, how YouTube views pay. So there's tons of different ideas what you should make a video about. And you wanna make that based on what people are actually looking for and not based on what you think people are looking for. That's very important. Okay, so do content research before you prepare your video. Then what you wanna do is you wanna prepare a content structure. That's basically to boost your retention rate. This is what we've looked at before. You wanna get people um, to watch your video all the way through. And also you wanna increase session time. What session time is, um, I'll give you an example. So let's say I put out a video and then somebody clicks on my video and then ends up watching five more videos and then actually stays on the platform for like an hour or two. That means that by somebody clicking on my video, the session time of, of a viewer is maybe one or two hours, which is pretty good. So you wanna get people, you wanna keep people on the YouTube platform. And when YouTube sees that your video is keeping people on the platform, then they will promote your video. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. But you, what you wanna basically do with all your videos is you wanna have a structure that works well on YouTube. And the structure that most YouTubers use that are successful on YouTube is um, this structure here. So you start off with a hook. You wanna hook your audience to make them curious about what's to come and you wanna make a lot of them watch all the way through. So you wanna take the first 15 to 60 seconds of your video to hook your audience. The way I do this, do this with educational content is I tell them exactly what they will get out of this video. So I tell them exactly what I'm gonna teach them, what they will learn. Um, uh, I'm gonna tell them some results that I've gotten with what I'm about to teach them. And I'm also sometimes tell them that they will get something for free or they've got an extra tip if they watch all, all the way until the end of the video. If you have like a vlog type of a YouTube channel, what you can do is take the most exciting piece of content of your entire video and put that in front of your video and start that, start the video with that 
um, with that intriguing piece of content that gets people curious and gets people hooked and so they watch all the way through. That's very important. If you miss this step, then a lot of people will not even watch the first 60 seconds. So you wanna make sure to not miss the hook. The second thing is your story. This is the content of your video. This is the value that you provide. So for me, for my educational videos, uh, this is where I actually show them what I've promised them in the beginning of the video. Now, the way I do this is I either write a whole script for my video um, or I prepare some bullet points. So the topics that I want to cover because I don't want to I don't want to get sidetracked because if you get sidetracked and you go off topic, then people will not will click away and they will get bored and they will lose interest. So you want to make sure you stay on topic and kind of have to find out what works best for you. But what I found out works quite well is just preparing a bullet point list or what I'm doing right now, prepare like a PowerPoint presentation where I can go through and just talk over. Now, the last thing of your video, so the end of your video should be a call to action. Now, if you actually run a business with a YouTube channel, if you're using YouTube to get leads for your business, this is where you can actually get people to your website or to your landing page or get them to sign up for your email list or all that kind of stuff. Um, but that comes at the cost of actually decreasing your session time. So if you take people off the YouTube platform, then YouTube will maybe not rank your video as high because other videos um, tend to lead to more session time. So keep that in mind. But if you actually run a business at some point, you have to take them to your business off the YouTube platform. So if you do it, do it at the end of your video. But what you should always do throughout your video is actually get people to engage with your video. So ask for likes, for comments, ask to share your video, and also let people know that they can subscribe to your channel if they wanna see more content from you. So I do this all at the end of my video. Um, but the thing is that a lot of people that watched until the middle are not there at the end anymore. So you also wanna make sure to, incre to include some of those calls to action in the middle of your video or even in the beginning. So. Um, let me just practice what I preach and ask you to like this video if you actually got some value out of it so far. You just give me a like here and also give me a comment down below if you have any questions so far. So try to kind of include this um, that's so that it appears natural. Don't, don't just randomly ask for likes. Make, get a little bit creative so people will actually want to give you some engagement. So engagement is very important uh, and also at the end, send people to other YouTube videos um, or this could be a video of you or it could be videos of other people so that it will increase your session time, which will show YouTube that you have a video that will keep people on the platform, which again will make YouTube rank your video higher. So that's the content structure. Once you have done that, the next step is to actually record and edit your video. So. Um, there's when many people get scared because they don't have any expensive equipment. They think you, they have to be very high quality. But the cool thing on YouTube is that you don't have to put out high um, video quality um, for your channel because it's still like um, a creator platform where all kinds of creators are on there. And the most important part is the quality of your content, not so much the quality of your video. Um, except maybe you do... Um, you have like a videography channel and you wanna um, do very nice film looking videos. But like for the video I'm doing right now, it doesn't matter if I have like a camera that is um, that is $2,000 or I'm using the webcam of my video because what you wanna get out of it is just the information and you don't wanna see like a blockbuster video. So if you only have an iPhone, use your iPhone to make videos. Uh, and then you will see as you grow your channel, you want to upgrade anyway because you want to continue to improve on your quality and that's when it happens naturally. But don't let that stop you. Just, just make sure you have quality content and then start filming your videos with whatever device you have. Also make sure to not forget to shoot your, your thumbnails because um, in a later step here, we want to create a custom thumbnails for your video because if you don't, then nobody will click on your video. That's just the way it is. Um, so you wanna make sure to actually think before you start shooting a video, what your thumbnail will look like so that you can shoot your thumbnail when you have set up everything to shoot your video. So don't forget this step. Then the next thing, like I said, we wanna create a custom thumbnail. And here again, I wanna give you a good example and a bad example. This is again from my YouTube statistics here. 
This is an example where I have created a very good thumbnail that grabbed people's attention um, and I got 11.3% impression click-through rate. What that basically means is that for every thousand people that see my video, 113 of them actually clicked on my video. And when you have a very high click-through rate, that that um, tells YouTube that if 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 YouTube shows this video to a thousand people, at least 11.3% um, of them will click on the video. And that's the goal of YouTube promoting your videos. They want to get people to click on them and stay and spend some time on the platform. So this is where your thumbnail is very important along with your title as well. And this is an example where I kind of messed up on the thumbnail and I only got 1.3% click-through rate, which is quite, quite bad. All right, um, now I want to give you a quick example here. Um, in this video, I'm going to upload a new video. I'm going to walk you through everything, how I optimize it. And this is the thumbnail that we're going to use. Um, so depending on your content, you want to use different types of thumbnails. For my educational videos, like I want to rank for the keyword sales funnels for beginner, for beginners. And um, the, the thing that works well for those kinds of videos is if you just have the thing that people are looking for in your thumbnail. So I have a high quality looking thumbnail and people will see, okay, this looks like a video that will be high quality and they will click on it. If I would choose, if I would just use like a freeze frame of my video that I have uploaded, it would look something like this. And you will see why this doesn't really stand out and not many people will click on this. So you wanna make sure to create a custom thumbnail. And the easiest way to create a custom thumbnail is to use a website called canva.com. That's how I started to create my thumbnails. I now use Photoshop, but Photoshop is a lot more complicated, especially for beginners. So I suggest if you don't have any design experience, just use canva.com, it's very easy. I'm gonna show you quickly what it looks like. So this is the website here and it's totally free, so 100% free. Um, so you you have a lot of templates that you can already use. So if you do like a travel video, you can take some inspiration from this one and you click on this as a template and then you can just take, change the text right here. Um, traveling, yeah, you can change everything. You can also use another template here like this one uh, and you can, you can get some inspiration from there and also just create your thumbnails and then download it here. Very easy, create a thumbnail in like five minutes. All right, so you have created your custom thumbnail. The next thing is to actually upload and optimize your video. And now I wanna take you through exactly um, this uploading process because YouTube kind of walks you through the whole process with their, with their system and the way it looks like. So I assume you know how to upload a video. So just click on the top here, create and then upload video. And then you get to this screen here. I already started it a bit. so. Um, the first thing that you have to enter is your title. So you want to make sure that if you want to rank for specific keywords, that you have your main keyword, your primary keyword in your title. So for this video, it's sales funnels for beginners. Then I also include something um, mostly in brackets, um, complete tutorial or 2020, just to make it a little bit more relevant. Um, another thing I want to say about thumbnails I forgot actually, is you probably have heard of clickbait. And clickbait is something that many people don't like and I understand why they don't like it, but the thing is, it works. And I'm not saying you should do clickbait. The thing is, if you can do clickbait and then deliver on what you do clickbaiting on, so um, then then you should do it. Um, but if you don't, if you can't deliver, so if you like, okay, how I got, I became a millionaire overnight, and then you don't actually, you haven't become a millionaire overnight, then it's bad. But um, it's okay to be a little bit clickbaity as long as you can deliver. That's what, like, if you know Mr. Beast, um, he's doing this very well. So he's clickbaiting, but then he actually does the stuff that he's clickbaiting on. Okay, so back to this one. So again, the title. Make sure your primary keyword is in the title. And then let's talk about the description of the video. This is where a lot of your optimization will be. So you wanna make sure that your primary and your secondary keywords are included in your video description. And I always prepare my video description before I even upload my video. And I basically have a Word document where I prepare all my bullet points and my script and everything. 
And this is also where I prepare my video description. So I always start off my video description with um, one or two sentences about what my video is about and I include keywords in those sentences. So here you see, um, this is my primary keyword for this video, sales funnels for beginners. You wanna make sure that this keyword is in the first sentence of your video description. Then I also try to include some secondary keywords. This is, um, if that's possible, then do it. What you shouldn't do in your description is don't list your keywords just one by one. So don't go sales funnels for beginners, how to build sales funnel, by sales funnel softwares, because Google um, or YouTube try, um, they notice when you just list down your keywords. They wanna see that you build real sentences and just include the keywords there. So that's what I do uh, with the first one or two sentences. And then because YouTube is also my business, I get people to sign up for my email list and that's why I, that's where I include a link. So here I'm giving away a free affiliate marketing ebook and um, I put this link just below this part here so people can see this link um, even without clicking on the show me more of the description button. Then I always include some links about um, about things that I include in the video. So like in this video, I talk about VidIQ, TubeBuddy, Canva and stuff like that. So I will include those links down below in the description. I will put them here. Then uh, the next thing is I do a more detailed description of my video that I utilize to put more of my keywords that I wanna rank for. This is the main part where I put my secondary keywords. Um, again, don't just list your keywords, actually build sentences that, um, that are grammatically correct and that makes sense. Um, the reason we do this is to, to, imp to optimize our video for search engines. It's not because many people will read your description. Most people will not read this, but we, will, but we use this to optimize our videos for, for YouTube, for the YouTube algorithm. Then what I do is I include some links here. I do affiliate marketing, so I, I have some affiliate links about tools that I use and whenever somebody clicks on those links that, and buys something, then I will basically um, get a commission for it. Um, then I have some social media links from, uh, of mine down there and some hashtags. Now hashtags um, is something that YouTube has introduced, I think one or two years ago, and nobody really knows how, or I haven't found someone that knows how effective they are. They are probably not as effective as on Instagram. Um, but YouTube gives, gives you the, up to, the uh, possibility to use them, so it can't hurt to actually use them. So I always put in three hashtags in my video, video description. Then if you use affiliate links inside of your video description, you wanna um, also have a disclaimer that your video description contains affiliate links um, and that you will receive a commission when somebody clicks on them. So the most important thing for optimizing your videos is to start your video off with sentences, including your keywords, and then also put a description with more keywords. All right, so I already pasted uh, my description in here so we can go on further. Then make sure to actually upload your custom thumbnail. So that here is where you can do this. Click, I already done this, so you can click on here, upload it, and then it will show up on top here. Um, you also see that vidIQ and TubeBuddy, they give me a lot more information on the whole process here. So I can click on the top here where I see a report and they remind you to put tags, um, keywords and title, keywords in description, triple keywords. And they also give you like a checklist of what you should do after you upload it. Okay, um, then if you have playlists, you wanna make sure to add this video to a playlist for, so for, for me, this video relates to affiliate marketing, so I'll just add it there, done. Then, um, is it made for kids? No. Then make sure to actually click on more options here because that's where we actually add our tags. Um, if you have a paid promotion, obviously do this here. And um, tags is also a big topic on how to optimize your video. So my strategy is that I wanna include tags that are actually relevant to my video. I don't wanna include tags that, that I think have a very high volume or that I think are very easy to rank for. I wanna include tags that are related to my video because only when YouTube sees that people um, interested in those tags are watching my video all the way through, that's when I can rank for those. So by using a tool like, um, like TubeBuddy 
or vidIQ, they actually give you recommendations for tags and that's how I find my tags. So I already sort, sort by relevance and then I just add the tags here. I already have done this, otherwise the video would become too long. So these are the tags that I've used for this video. Make sure to actually max out your number of characters that you, you can use here. So, and you have 500 characters, make sure to use most of this. Okay, let's move on to the next part. This, I always leave it as it is. I allow betting, publish, blah, blah, blah. Um, education, so choose the category, allow comments, and then go to next step. Now, if you already have like a thousand subscribers and 100,000, I think, hours of watch time within a year, you have the possibility to put ads on your video. Now, many people th say that if you put ads in your video, that will improve your rankings and you will get more views. YouTube itself, they say, this is not true. We don't favor videos that that have ads in them. Now, it does make sense that YouTube would favor those videos because that's the videos that make YouTube money. Personally, I I can't tell you what is true, but I put ads there because it makes me money. And um, yeah, maybe YouTube ranks the videos higher. I don't think so actually, because I see YouTube, YouTube channels that are very big that don't put any ads in their videos. So yeah, you can try it out for yourself. So, but I put on monetization. So you can choose this here, done. And then you can um, actually, if your video is longer than 10 minutes, you can you choose to put ads during a video and after your video. And if you wanna place them manually, you can click on place manually and then just put them throughout your video. So let's say I wanna put two ads in this video. Let's say after four minutes, uh, I put an ad and then here's another one already in there. Uh, I'll put this ad here. If you wanna maximize the revenue for your channel, um, what you wanna do is put the ads mostly in, in the beginning of your video because that's when most people actually are still watching a video and that's what, how you can increase your ad revenue. But that just on the side. Okay, so we've done our ads. Click next. Now you have to say that you don't have any sensitive content. Okay, next. And here you have the possibility to add an end screen and add cards. I always add end screens because it keeps people on my channel. So what I do is I always use this, um, this layout here where I have my, my channel icon here where people can subscribe to my channel. And then um, I suggest them to watch another one of my videos and I don't choose this video I let YouTube choose it so you have the possibility to to just click on best for viewer and then YouTube because YouTube knows their audience YouTube knows exactly what they need to show your viewers to make them actually keep watching so that's because that's why I use best for viewer and so for each individual viewer this might be a different video okay so save this one Add screen, end screens are added. Next thing is cards. So sometimes on the on the top of your video screen, you will see some cards where you can send people to other videos. So what I sometimes do in my videos is um, I send people to different videos depending on the topic that I'm talking about. So in this video, I'm talking about sales funnels. I teach you about exactly what they are and I send people to one full tutorial where I teach people how to build a sales funnel and that's when I include the card. So some people will go to that card and watch the next video, which increases my session time and that will improve my video rankings. So I'm just trying to find the part where I talk about this, um, this video here. So that's, this is the part where I tell them to go and watch this video now. That's where I add this card. So I just click on add card, then create new card and then I, wa I search for the video, it's this one here, and then I click create card. And now when people watch through here, they will see, they will see this card coming on the top here and they will get to the next video. So this can be very effective as well. So let's see what's next. 
cool we've done that next now you can already decide to publish your video right here um, what I would suggest to do is you take your time with uploading and writing your description and optimizing everything and then just um, uh, save your video unlisted because you want to you want to release your video when most of your viewers are actually um, on YouTube and so let me just save this video right here so nobody's seeing it yet but um, I have the possibility to to publish it with one click you see now it is unlisted and so how, where how do we actually know when to no I want to I want to show you something else really quickly so um, another thing that helps improving your rankings if you actually add subtitles to your video so I'm going to just show you an example here um, so let's take this video And this, this icon on the bottom here is, is uh, the subtitles, which is called closed captions on YouTube. And that's where we see here the subtitles. And I've noticed that a lot of people actually do watch the video with subtitles. And I've seen many people say that subtitles improve your SEO for your videos. So that's why I, I use subtitles for many of my videos that aren't too long and that I have, that I have actually scripted. And the tool that I use to do this, I don't type it all myself. I use ref.com, which is a, an awesome website where um, you can just order transcriptions of your videos. So the way it works is you just click on place new order, then captions. And then you can integrate it already with your YouTube channel. So you can click on YouTube here and then it will find your videos. So here are all my videos, and then I can just click on this one. This is the new one that I've just uploaded, add to cart, and I think it's like a dollar for per minute that you have to pay here, and um, they will automatically um, turn on subtitles when they have done transcripting my video. So you save a lot of time by using ref.com. I also have a link down there in my description where you can try out ref.com, Maybe I also can make sure to get you a discount with ref.com. Um, I'll check that later. Um, okay, so let's now actually talk about when to publish your video. So um, what I use is vidIQ and vidIQ tells me when to publish my video. So when you go to vidIQ, um, this is the vidIQ dashboard. Um, and again, this is the free version. So you can do, the, do this with the free version. You can scroll down and then you see it. Um, a widget here which says best time to post and what they do is they analyze your video views so they know when most of people watch your video so for today the best the best time for me would be to post 8 p.m now um, 8 p.m would be this year so most people are actually watching 8 p.m around this time i think it makes more sense to actually publish your video a little bit before this because that's when people start getting on the platform so I would say about 4 p.m. would be a very good time for me to post here. Um, so just make sure to publish around this time here. And again, just use the vidIQ tool to analyze your channel and you'll know when the best time is for your channel for your specific time zone. So publish your video when people are actually online. Now, the next thing most people don't do but what I think really helps your video is to, if you spend some time promoting your video, especially if you already have an audience, um, you wanna make sure to get your video in front of the audience because in the first 24 hours of your video being published, YouTube is gathering data and deciding where they should rank your video. So I'm gonna take you through the process that I'm doing to, publish my, uh, to promote my video. So the first thing that I do is I like my own video. Not that it really helps, but it gets the ball ro rolling and it looks better than zero likes. So like your own video. And then the next thing is I put a comment, I put the first comment under my video. Um, and what you can do with this comment is do a call to action. So if you wanna just get more views, what you wanna do is either tell people to go and like the video, to scroll back up and like the video, maybe in a funny way. Um, what you can also do is give them a link to subscribe. So what I've done in the past is like, I've said, uh, this is the 
this is the best link you've clicked all day and then I've sent them to a link where they could subscribe to my channel. So I got a lot of subscriptions that way. And um, if I wanna take people off the platform, if I wanna promote my business or I wanna get them on my email list, what I do is I promote the free freebies, the lead magnets that I have to give away. So here I promote a free email marketing course that I'm giving away in exchange for their email address. So because people scroll down to the comment section, you can use this comment section to your advantage. Now, the next thing you wanna do is share your video with as many people as possible that you think are interested in your content. So what you can do is go to your video, then go to share, and then you can just click on each of them. So if you have a following, just share it on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever your social media following already is that gets some views going and tells YouTube that you have a good video. Um, if you have an email list, also share your video with your email list. Um, then what you can do, I don't think every YouTube channel can do this, but if you already have some subscribers, you get the community feature. So you can go to your channel and share your video with the community feature, especially when people are on their phones, they will see a lot of content from the community feature. So on your channel, just go to community here and then post your channel there. So write something why they should watch this video now. So this video now, obviously you wanna spend some more time here and um, then you click on video and then you just choose your new video. So now it's kind of buggy. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't, doesn't work right now, but um, you will get it to work. Make sure you post it on your community tab as well, like I did here. Here are some examples. All right. Um, and then this is the, the, the professional part maybe, like you don't have to do this, but it definitely increases your ranking. So. The way Google works, um, if you haven't known, YouTube is part of Google and both of them are search engines. And the way they decide to rank your video, the way they decide if they should rank your video high is um, if you have a lot of so-called backlinks. So when a lot of other high authority websites have a link to your video, that will improve your video rankings. And I mean, it's not very easy to get your link to very high authority websites. But there are some easy ways you can use this. One easy way I wanna show you that I personally do um, is I just go on Quora.com, the website that I've showed you already, which is a question and answer website. And I just go and answer people's questions and send them to my video. Because Quora.com is a very high authority website that if you type in a question sometimes in Google, uh, a website of Quora will show up and people will find your video that way. And you also get backlinks to your video, which will tell Google this is a high quality video that people are actually linking to. So um, again, I'm gonna show you an example here, um, your content. So I think uh, a week ago I did a video about high ticket affiliate marketing. So I answered a question about what is high ticket affiliate marketing. Somebody asked that question. I put the content of my video inside of that question and tell people, Here's a list of seven of my favorite affiliate programs. If you don't wanna read it all, you can also check the video on my YouTube channel. So when you click on this, they will get to my YouTube channel and see the video. So that helps the rankings, that helps my video views, which is a way you can promote your video. And I have gotten a lot of views from Quora. And the thing is, it's also a search engine. So a year down the line, two years down the line, pe people will still find your video through Quora and um, the backlinks will still um, boost your videos. All right, so those are the exact steps that I go through every time when I create a new video for YouTube. Again, don't forget to download my YouTube optimization checklist, which basically includes all the steps that I've covered here in this video, so you can use it every time when you create a new video for YouTube. You'll find the link to that checklist down below in the description of this video. So if you actually liked this video and you got some value out of it, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and also share it with anybody who's trying to grow a YouTube channel and is struggling a bit with getting views or ranking for certain keywords. Also, leave me a comment down below with any questions that you have or any comments. I love to also check out your YouTube channels. Maybe I can give you some individual tips for getting more views for your specific channel. 
Also, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss any new videos that I put out in the future. I have a lot more tutorials coming about how to grow on YouTube, so make sure you actually don't miss them. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.